All right, okay. Begin so by uh, looking, looking at these notes together. Unicellular um, and first of all, we start by writing organism your name at the top. Unit of the page means one. Uh, uh, page multi is paper later on. Means many. Uh, first of all, before we begin, we want to take a look at what these words cell, mean. Unicellular and many. multicellular cell organisms. Organism. The word uni, very much like the word unicycle, unicycle means one. Unicellular, one cellular organism. Mean multi, of course, means Many, so we have one cellular organisms and multiple or many celled organisms. Let's begin by writing in some definitions. First of all, unicellular organism. Now, unicellular organisms are organisms with one cell. And it's within that one cell that they're able to carry out all the functions that they need to exist. And multicellular organisms. Or organisms with many cells, or more specifically, with many kinds of cells. Now we're going to go ahead and write out some uh, some additional characteristics uh, to distinguish between a unicellular organism and a multicellular organism. You may be familiar with unis. First of all, unicellular organisms. One key characteristic is that they have just one cell. Uh, some that you may have seen or heard of before might include uh, an amoeba. Now, an amoeba. I'm going to attempt to draw an amoeba here. You know, my my artistic skills are uh, limited. So, yeah, an amoeba might look something kind of like that. It may have a nucleus inside. I may have some sort of vacuoles. Um, but for the most part, it's just kind of a blob. Uh, another example of a one cellular organism might be something that's shaped a little bit like a foot. And that's a paramecium. Now, a paramecium, and this is a little information that's coming up in the future, but a paramecium has little hairs around, and they're, they're not exactly hairs, but they're hair like structures called cilia that help them to move around. Within the paramecium, uh, they're going to also have a nucleus that's going to control everything. They're also going to have mitochondria and other things that help them carry out the functions. But it's all going to be enclosed in one small uh, organism. And finally, another our third example will be a euglena. Now, a euglena has a slightly different shape to it. It actually has a very long tail. It's called a flagella. And uh, that tail whips around kind of in circles, very much like the uh, uh, rotor on the motor, and uh, helps it to move around. So we've got an amoeba, paramecium, and a flagella. And that's a single cellular organism. Now, multicellular organisms, in contrast, have more than one cell. And uh, we're going to be looking at, and you could, I mean, we as humans are examples of multicellular organisms, and you could probably think of lots of them. Uh, the key thing with the multicellular organisms is that uh, typically there are lots of them, and each cell having its own nucleus is uh, kind of encased in on its own, whether they're uh, in blocks or perhaps they are um, jumbled together. Uh, in an animal type of cell. Each one is going to have its own nucleus. So you've got lots of different cells that are together. Another characteristic of a unicellular organism is that these cells are not linked. In other words, they are not connected together. They are independent from one another. Okay, so wherever the cell is, uh, even though it may be in a community with a another large number of unicellular organisms, they are not connected together. Okay, regardless of the kind, regardless of the kind of uh, organism that it is, it is not going to be connected with some of the other ones. Uh, in contrast to that, a multicellular organisms, uh, these cells are linked, so we have a uh, similar cells are linked to form tissue. And that's kind of a key word to understand that tissue is a whole bunch of the same type of cells 
that might all be linked together. I'll draw a similar example. Um, and so these might be just some examples of different types of cells that are all linked together and uh, they form tissues that carry out a particular function. Now within a plant, um, a lot of those cells are going to have uh, somewhat of a, uh, a rigid, almost a box-like appearance, uh, whether it's in the leaves or whether it's in the, uh, the tree trunks. And of course we've got uh, chloroform a chlorophyll to carry out photosynthesis. So this would be an example of perhaps plant cells. Uh, they might have that type of a, a structure to them. Uh, animal cells, on the other hand, are not going to be quite as rigid. By the way, this rigid form of plants is what enables plants and trees to grow so fairly tall. Uh, animals, however, they, they tend to have a more of an amoeboid or an amoeba shape to them. Like kind of rounded and a whole bunch of the same type that all um, come together in the same area. Those are different cells that make up the tissue. All right, the third type that we're going to be looking at here, uh, excuse me, third characteristic is uh, they is that in unicellular characteristics is that they do not form tissue. Okay, they do not form tissue but they may form colonies that would be whole uh, groups of them hundreds millions even that are all together uh, some of them uh, of course a colony would be a, uh, a string of cells such as uh, bacteria and algae. Um, string of them together might look something kind of like this, a think of a string of pearls, uh, a whole bunch of the same type of thing all strung together. That would be a, uh, a colony of them. But perhaps there may be many of them that live uh, together in the same area inside perhaps a, uh, a membrane or some sort of enclosure. Uh, by contrast to that, for a multicellular organism, um, more than one type of tissue forms a structure. Okay, so we have more, more than one type of tissue forms a structure. And we call this an organ. You could probably think of different organs in the body of a human. Now, within plants, um, we draw a little bit of a, a cross section of a leaf. And the leaf is going to be made up of the top part. So, the top part of the leaf that is exposed to the sun might look kind of like that. And then there are some elongated cells beneath that. They're called palisades and I don't really know that many, but then there are some rounder shaped ones. A lot of space in this area. A lot of space in between the two layers of the leaf. And then there's a bottom layer of the leaf. It looks something kind of like this. Not quite as green as the top layer, because this is the part that does not face the sun. But it still has a very similar structure to it than does the top layer. And so this would be a cross section of a leaf and an example of an organ. Where the leaf serves as an example of an organ for trees. 